Let's examine data flow programming by taking a look at this example that we put together as part of our last section. Notice what we have here. We have two controls and five indicators. What we expect to happen here when this code runs is that data will come from our control, go through the increment to our indicator, and because there's a branch, will also come this way, go through another increment, and go into this indicator, which is called our indicator 2. But the question is this. Here we have another branch. Here we have this control going into this indicator. Which function executes first, and which function executes second? Well, let's put some values in our controls and watch the code run with execution highlighting turned on. Turn execution highlighting on, and I'll run it continuously so we can watch what happens. First, observe the top part. We see our control starts at zero, it gets one incremented to it, then comes through another increment and has two come out. Watch that again. Zero to one to two to the output. Of course, we have second pieces of code executing here. We have a plus 2 going into here, and we have a plus 2 going into here. So not surprisingly, since this wire is the one which is connected to both the increment and the plus 2 section, we know that the output here is one higher than from this section. Let's turn off con run continuously. What's interesting is to observe the behavior of this branch down here. Take a look and try and tell which happens first, the top branch or the bottom branch. The answer is they happen in parallel. And the reason that they happen in parallel is that there is no wire between this upper section and this bottom section. There's nothing tying the two of them together. However, there is a wire connecting this section with this section. As a result, this increment and this plus 2 can't function until this increment is finished. If that's not clear, let's run it again continuously and we can observe. The last code to finish is always going to be this section. This section and this section run at approximately the same time, and this section runs after this part. This is called data flow programming. The reason this guy can't run is because it doesn't have any data yet. Its data comes from here. This goes back to what we said a moment ago that a node executes when data is available to all of its inputs. This guy and this guy won't execute until data is available at this input and this input. And that data won't be available at that input until this function is run.